Okay, welcome to the next session, <laughs> which is about the Apache Felix web console. And I guess this will be a very special session just for you, yeah. and, and of course you as well. So, um, yeah, you already know that, but my name is Karsten Zieler. I'm working for Adobe Switzerland. I'm working on different um, Apache projects, especially Apache Felix and Apache Sling, doing all this OSGI. Um, OSGI stuff as well, and I'm here to talk about the Apache Felix web console. Do you already know the web console? Uh, yeah, I'm our primary user at that point. Ah, okay. I use it every day. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so, let's start with the problem description. It's about how to manage an OSGI-based application and how to do that remotely um, in an easy way and have, have something which is extensible, so you can add your own uh, information to, to the um, management console. And another interesting thing is to have some sort of offline support, so you can get all the status of the, of the instance, send it to some, I don't know, service guy, and he can then look into it and, and find out what's, what went wrong or what's going on, on the, in the system. There are various solutions. Um, first of all, JMX, which is the, usually the way in, in Java, uh, how to monitor and then manage systems. But this is usually the problem with, uh, with RMI being used. And it's very hard to um, open the correct ports for that and um, get a, a connection to the server. So then there are different solutions, which are most of them are, all, which are all of them are text-based like the uh, Felix shell or the Gogo shell, Equinox shell, and, and so on. Um, these are quite nice because they have a shell and all these commands you can, can use. But again, usually those have the problem as well, um, as they either use SSH or, or Telnet or whatever to connect to the server, so you have to open up these ports, and that's not always possible. And then there are the UI-based ones. Um, one of them is the, um, comes from the Knobblerfish OSGI distribution, which is the Swing UI, which is pretty nice to, to manage your installation. And that's why I'm here. We have the nice Apache Felix web console, which is HTML web-based. So let's start with that. Um, the console provides a rich set of functionality to manage your bundles and the services and configurations, the system information, and all this uh, typical um, stuff you can do with that. It's jQuery-based um, UI. Um, it can be easily extended with, with your own plugins, add your own information, add your own functionality to, to the console, um, and it's still a very lightweight uh, bundle which you can add to your, to your system. If you want to install it, um, it comes in two flavors. One of them is, is a bundle um, including all the dependencies, so you can just deploy this bundle as, as a single thing. Um, or you can use the, uh, yeah, the smaller one, and then you have to install all the dependencies as bundles into your system as well, like comments I owe, the file upload stuff, and the JSON bundle. So it depends on how you want to um, install the, the web console. And then, of course, you can uh, add all the um, optional plugins to enhance the console with, with all the features that are available. Most of them are also um, sub projects at uh, Apache Felix. Okay, and now I'm trying to do some, some live demo of the console. Just to show the basic functionality we have. This is the, the web console, and um, the first view you usually get is, is a list of installed bundles. You see which, which bundles are installed. You have um, at the top a nice overview where you can see um, if all bundles are running and are active, or if there's some bundle not, um, not resolved or not, um, not active and, and so on. So this gives you a nice overview. And if you, for example, go into a particular bundle, you get all the details about this bundle, um, like uh, which packages it exports, with the versions, which one it imports, from where it imports these, uh, these packages, you see the services these, this bundle has registered, and you also see all the manifest information. So this might, in the, if, if you have some, some problem with, with your installation, this might usually be the first um, look 
into and, and see if, for example, a bundle is, is not resolving, why it is not resolving, which other dependencies are missing, and so on. This is quite nice. And then the other uh, nice thing is the configuration. So this is using the um, OSGI configuration admin service underneath, and you can see all the configurations which are currently available in your system. And then you can just, let's see if we find some interesting one, maybe this one. Um, open up one configuration, you see all the different <coughs> configuration options for, for these configurations. Um, and have all these, has, have this nice form to update and change the configuration. This information, um, or this configuration is coming from the configuration admin, but the information for the screen is coming from the OSGI meta type um, service, which provides this meta type information, like which configuration properties are available, what type they have, what default value, these descriptions and labels and so on, is also, all comes from the meta type. Um, information. All right, what else do we have then? Uh, I should close this one. Then we have the uh, all the services, which are currently um, registered in the service registry, so you can have a look at, um, at, at those. For example, if, if a service is missing, you would see that it's missing in this, in this list, and, and then you can go from there and find out what, what the problem is, for example. Um, this is quite nice. And we also have support for um, some consoles running within this, <laughs> this console. So for example, for, for the GoGo shell, which just runs in, in the browser. And you can just type in all the different um, commands you have, like getting the list of all bundles. Or maybe um, if you want to see just the Felix ones, you can do this with the different commands. Or if you want to find out the, for example, I don't know, the um, bundle location of, of bundle 110, you get this and then so on. So we have all this functionality of, of this Google shell, but this is still running um, through the browser, so you don't have to open any, any additional port. In addition to, to the Google shell um, support, we have a scripting shell which is also a sub-project in, in Felix. This allows you to write scripts um, which use the OSGI functionality. So you can um, get bundles, you can look up services and then do some stuff with the service like calling some methods and, and so on. For example, this is a yeah, pretty dumb um, example which just finds out which bundle contains this class for whatever reason, but <laughs> that's the simplest example I could, could come up with. You can just execute it and you see that this bundle is providing this class. But you can just in basically invoke every service which is available in the service registry and do some interesting stuff with it. Um, what else? Yeah, maybe as well interesting is we have the licensing um, tab which this is all available bundles and which license, license this, this bundle has. So you can easily find out if there are, um, I mean, you have to go through the whole list to see the different licenses used within the current installation. Sure. Um, if, if you're using OSGI, yes. So this is based on... on I'm not sure. But if, if, if you're just, let's say, plain, plain Java with, with JAR files, um, then, you, I mean, you, you can just grab the code and, and then more or less run it, but not out of the box. Your, your scripting example, you did mm -hmm. Right, yeah, yeah, that's, that's also possible, exactly, yeah. Oh, that's actually a good point, I, I hope I have, it's installed. Uh, no, it's not. 
No, I, yeah, sorry. Um, for exactly that purpose, um, there's a special plugin in, in, the, in the Felix project. So you just type in the package and it um, prints you out the, the bundles exporting that one in the different versions, and then you can see what's going yeah. on. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, so this is the, um, the basic functionality. We have, there's other stuff like, for example, um, if you have installed the OSGI event admin, you can see the events that were running through the event admin. Um, sometimes this, this helps as well to see if an event was, was uh, sent or not and, and so on. So for all different parts in, in your application, you usually have your own plugin providing the um, corresponding information. Okay, so that's for the start demo. And then there are these different extension points where you can just add new functionality um, to the web console. It starts with um, doing some branding, um, like we, we have seen uh, there. And in my, my demo, you could see that there was a Sling logo um, at the right corner. So this was actually the version we are using in Apache Sling, so it's branded with, with a Sling logo and, and, and so on. And you could do that yourself. And there are other things I will go more into detail now. So the first one is, is this actually this, this branding, where you can have your own logo, your own URLs, like, like on the top, uh, a title and, and so on. It's pretty, pretty easy to do. You can Im implement a service, a branding plugin service, which allows you to do some, some more um, things regarding to, to branding. And so you can customize the look out, the look and feel of, of the web console to whatever your, your product is, at least in some, some ways. For translations, um, sometimes it's, it's nice to have the cons console translated to different languages for users not, not so fluent with, with English. And out of the box, we have uh, Bulgarian, German, and Russian um, next to the English one. And you can just provide your own translation if, if you want to. I think more interesting is um, the security aspect of, of the web console. Um, you definitely should secure the, the console or access to the console in, in some way because you can do all crazy stuff like just uninstalling a bundle and changing a configuration or whatever. Um, and usually it's, it's a good idea to block the access to the console on, on the network level. So you block out the, the internet and just have for example, internal access to, to the console or whatever fits, fits your needs. Um, and you should definitely configure the authentication. And this brings me to the next um, extension point, which is a security provider. Um, the built-in security provider just does um, basic HTTP authentication. We can just provide username and password. This is not very secure, uh, of course, but it's what you get by, by default. You can implement your own authentication by just implementing this web console security provider interface, but then it's still doing basic uh, authentication. If you want some um, improved authentication mechanism, like, I don't know, uh, connecting to something else or using cookies or whatever, then you should um, implement the extended version, which we cleverly named web console security provider 2. Um, and this allows you to do all kinds with uh, respect to authentication. There are different implementations uh, available. Um, the default is just um, having a single configurable user and, and password. So the first thing when you install the console should be to change this password from the default to something, uh, something else. Uh, at Apache Caraf, I think there's a JAS-based authentication provider, and then Sling we have something which authenticates against the JCR repository. Um, it also uses a Sling authentication setup. So if you're using Sling, that's a good way to secure the console as well. So we have these two different um, interfaces which you can implement to add your own authentication. These interfaces have a method for authorization as well, uh, but it's not used at all, <laughs> so it's just just sits there in the interface and waits to be used. And actually, we are planning to implement authorization for, for the next 
major version of the web console, so you can really, uh, for example, the, the, the basic use case we have is distinguishing between users who can just read the information and users who can change them. Um, it's very useful to see the bundle list and the configurations, but of course you don't want to give everyone the ability to change these, these settings, so that's... Um, no, there's no Active Directory implementation right now. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. That's at least the idea. <laughs> right. Okay, and the even more interesting uh, plugins are the, um, the, your, your own plugins for the web console, so you, you are adding uh, functionality. These are, um, in the end, servlets you are deploying, and um, you have different ways to, um, to uh, implement this plugin. One is you extend already existing classes and then just implement the missing um, methods. And the other one is, is directly implementing a, a Java servlet um, service. Regardless of which way you are, um, you are picking, you have to define service properties when registering your service. Um, one is a label, so this is a part of the URL to access your plugin. The other one is a title, um, which is a title that is dis displayed. And you can also, this one is optional, choose a category in which this plugin should be displayed. So this gives you a nice um, segregation of, of the different plugins and the different categories. Um, if you're not defining a category, then it all goes into the main one, main category. So just to have some, some Java code here, um, if you want to implement your own plugin based on the HTTP, um, on, the, on the servlet, this is how it could look like. This one is using the um, OSGI declarative services and the annotations defined in the APG Felix project. So you basically define these three properties, um, which I just mentioned, the label, title, and the category. And then you have to implement the servlet itself, which usually is uh, implementing the service method. In this case, I'm just writing hello world, the so typical <laughs> first example you're, you're doing for implementing a plugin. But this is basically the method you implement for outputting the uh, information you want to see in your plugin. Or if you choose the other approach, and extend the existing um, abstract classes coming from the Felix web console. It would look like this, so you extend the class, have to override the constructor, and then you implement the render content method, which is invoked for rendering. It's basically the same. The major difference between those two approaches is that this one, uh, of course, adds a package import to one of the Felix console um, packages, while the other one is independent. So, it depends on what, what you want to do. So um, for rendering, you implement the service or do get or render content method, depending on, on the, the way you, you pick. And for the interaction, you either implement the service or do post method. So if you provide the ability to, to change something through your plugin. Uh, for the UI, you usually use jQuery because it's just bundled in and then jQuery UI. You can add your own JavaScript stuff and then CSS resources. Um, to, to that as well. And we also have some simple templating support, so you can write out a, um, an HTML template and that has all these markups and the placeholders and variables, and they all get then filled. Uh, again, it depends on how you want to write your plugin. These are just the options you, you have. And um, apart from these plugins of the web console, there's another interesting project in, in Felix, which we called Apache Felix Inventory. And this is actually, um, or the idea behind this is to provide status information about your installation. So getting um, the installed bundles, the state of the bundles, configurations, system properties, running services, all the, all this stuff, and getting this information in, in different format like um, in, in text format or in JSON uh, and, and so on, and maybe also provide um, attachments. I will come to that in, in a minute, why this is useful. And 
this is a, as I said, this is a different sub-project in, uh, in Felix, so you can write your inventory um, services independent of, of the web console and, and use them, but we also have direct support in the web console and um, displaying them. And you can see everything which is under the status um, menu item. These are all inventory printers um, which are displayed in the web console as well. And if you want to implement such a thing, um, you just uh, implement the inventory printer um, interface. And this is basically just a, a print method where you put out the information in the format which is required. So you register your service with different um, service properties. You give a unique name to this uh, inventory printer, a title, and then you specify which format this uh, printer is able to, to put out. In this case, it's just text in JSON format. But we have these three choices, text, JSON, and, and HTML. And it could also add attachments. And as I said, I will come to that in, in a second. So first of all, I'm going to the demo again, showing the different um, inventory printers we have. So for example, there's the, again, this is a repetition of, of uh, other information we've already seen, but it's, it's, just, um, it's just the status information, so you don't have any um, functionality to, to change the information. So you, you see the, the bundle list and, um, sorry, you have the configuration services and so on. Um, you see the uh, status of the HTTP service, um, and other, for example, system properties, and all these interesting informations. And the other one, other interesting information are you can access all, all the log files, um, so you don't have to have physical access to, to the hard drive where the, where the log file is, is stored. You can just view it here in the browser and, and do the stuff. And the very nice thing here is that you can just download all this information as a zip file. So you get the output of all inventory printers um, in one zip file. And this, for example, in includes the log files. That's where the attachments um, are interesting because you can just, for example, add all available log files, not just the one which is, not, not just the current one, but also the um, rotated log files and, and so on. Um, and the zip then contains the attachments, all the inventory printers printing out text, all of them printing out JSON and so on. And then you have a separate file for all this, all this stuff. And this is um, very, very interesting. As this one allows you something we call um, offline um, usage of, of this information. So you can create this configuration zip on, on your instance where you, for example, have a problem where, where, or where some problem occurred, and then send this zip to, um, to a developer or a service guy. And this one can just see all the status. He has access to the log file and can hopefully find out on, with all this information what went wrong and have a diagnosis on, on what, what the problem is. This works pretty well, especially as we have uh, also JSON files um, in the configuration zip so we, so we can automate some checks like are all bundles active, is a specific configuration um, active where you know that this configuration, if it's changed, always makes trouble so you can just check that um, with, with a script using the JSON output and it's very, very nice and, and handy to do that. Okay, yeah, hit the demo. And the last um, part I have um, is the, um, the REST API of, of the web console. Um, we right now have a very, very simple version of this REST API, which basically allows you to um, change bundles, bundle state, or get bundle state, change bundle state, upload bundles through a REST API, and it's the same for configurations. Um, we have this documentation on, on the website about those um, REST APIs. But um, we are also defining in the OSGI world a REST API for this, which is the current RFC 182. And this defines 
uh, a very good REST API for exactly those, those things like um, getting the status of the framework, getting the status of, of the bundles, uh, manipulating them, uploading new bundles, stopping a bundle, and, and so on. The same with, with services, getting all the service states and, and uh, have operations on, on the services. And this is, um, so this is, um, yeah, I mean, let's say a more well-defined API of the thing which we already have in the web console, but being more done more elegantly. So, um, uh, ah, yeah, right. And then just the second point for in this RFC 182, um, it also allows you to define extension points. So, for example, defining a REST API for configurations and so on. And the, the nice thing is that the, um, the final um, uh, specification comes with a Java client and a JavaScript client. You can just directly use, connect to your um, remote OSGI installation and uh, do all this stuff using these two clients, which is pretty nice, I think. This brings me actually to my last last slide. Um, yeah, so the Apache, Apache Felix web console is really very flexible and extensible. You can add your own plugins, your own inventory printers, uh, but you also get a lot of out-of-the-box functionality already. Um, there are different plugins available which you can just install and enhance the information uh, fun and functionality. You have this nice offline support, which I think is one of the best, best features of, of the web console. And as I said throughout the talk, the two major things uh, we, we are planning for the next version of the web console is exactly this authorization, so we can really um, restrict certain functionality to um, specific users or groups or whatever. And uh, this REST support following the um, RFC 182 of the OSGI implementation specification. And that's actually all I have about the web console. As I said, it's a short talk. <laughs> Do you have any questions? We now we have to kill half an hour, so yeah. <laughs> no, it's not actually not true. Yeah, and yeah. Right, yeah. That's just a little bit difficult to, to connect this to, to your Maven build. What is available actually is, is we have uh, support, uh, we have a Maven um, plugin which allows you to um, deploy your artifact to, um, to the installation. And that's actually deploying the artifacts through the web console, so the REST API we have. So the first step of what you're interested in is, is done, <laughs> but you don't get this, this output you, you want to right now. Any other question? So you, you were showing the, the, the log uh, you know, with all the down analytics and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Is it uh, possible to extend the analytics uh, at that point so that when you do that download, you do some of your own checks and hold on to that moment with your own health check? Um, actually, um, the analysis part is, is um, is all your, your work you have to do. 
So the console right now just provides you to download the zip file, and then you write your own scripts analyzing them. So that's, yeah. Right, right, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's true, yeah. And yeah. with the REST API, you can just then pull that off whenever you need, whenever you need. Yep. So you just, you know, have a daily task to, to grab this and make sure that no one's misconfigured our new system. Yep. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Keep the admins in line. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's the idea, yeah. What we also have um, in the um, Apache Sling project is, is an extension to, to the web console and to the inventory printers which basically um, spits out all information from JMX into a JSON file. So, so you had all this. All the JMX parts and the sling just gives all the information that they can yeah. get. You can yeah. get that and you can do an analytics of that on all your, your various printers. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Cool. My interest is looking for, we're doing a big migration for the GPU. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, so there's spurious errors with connection frames and then there's, you know, stuck workflows and things like that. Mm -hmm. Those are all kinds of things you kind of you're working kind of on and pull out. And, so. That stuff's all available through JMX. And so you can, so in the CQ version of the Git console, there's a JMX console in right. there. Yes, you have that. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes. Just sometimes. But then you have to get the extension one because he only built basically one day backwards for some of that stuff. There's, you know, that's a detail. Uh, but yeah. I'm, more, <laughs> it, it's, I'm more interested in, you know, once you've done the discovery and you understand your system, because it's really about, it's a, it's a cool system, and, but it's complicated and there's lots of moving parts and you can't know about them all until you learn and experience it and, and build it. So once you, once you've sort of gotten that over, Mm -hmm. push a button, and you know, the choice would be whether you're going to do it as a plug-in and do it, or you do it as an external script that runs all the REST APIs and some other other Right, yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, I can see in this web console the advantage of being able to use, you know, put it all together and get the stuff in one package and do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, um, Yeah, so this is, I think this is a choice you have, have to make. On the one hand, uh, with a web console and this is configuration, the, you get the real benefit is that you can pass this to, to someone else, right? So when, when you see there's a problem and you, you can't figure out yourself what, what's going on, you can just send this zip file to, to, well, to someone. Sure, yeah. Okay, so I would say thank you for being here and enjoy the rest. <laughs>